and welcome. I'm Bonnie Graves and I'm here in beautiful Pismo Beach where we're getting ready to kick off the festivities of Savor the Central Coast with Sunset Magazine and with an amazing team of local chefs. And I'm sitting right next to one of the favorites. This is executive chef Mike McGurdy of the Cracked Crab in Pismo Beach. So I have, an, I have a confession to start out with. I am allergic to crab. It is one of the most unfair things ever but I hear that you have, I have to take it on faith, that you have the finest crab bisque there is to be had. Um, we've put a lot of research into it. It is a, a recipe we've been using for over 14 years since we've been open. Um, you know, very specific as far as who's grinding our spices, where we're getting our sherry from. Um, we've perfected it over the years, and yeah, we're pretty proud of it. When I, when I say that people are obsessed about this man's crab bisque, it is, I, I'm not putting it mildly. I mean, this is, has an entire cult-like following here in Pismo. So we, we know you won't give us a secret recipe. Can you tell us a little bit? You mentioned sherry, for example. Is, is that a key ingredient? Do you go for, is it a sherry vinegar? Or is it a straight dry sherry? It's what do you uh, dry sherry. A dry sherry. Um, and that the sherry gives it, it's going to give it a little bit of a heat in uh, combination with cayenne pepper, some of the white pepper that we're going to put in. Um, it kind of adds a little bit of like that nuttiness flavor. It blends in really well with the garlic and the olive oil, and they all just come together. Um, people think crab bisque um, or lobster bisque if you're from New England. They yeah. think that rich, creamy sherry, and it just adds that little extra to it, I think. Now, that... here's the real question. Uh, saltine crackers, sourdough, what is the preferred accompaniment? Um, nothing? Nothing at all? Sourdough rolls, we don't do crackers with our bisque. We think our bisque stands alone. Um, it goes great with a sourdough bread because we have a local person at Atascadero that brings us our rolls. Yeah, there's serious um, sourdough around here. You know, it, it's what we're known for from San Francisco all the way down yeah. to L.A. People come to town, they want to try the different sourdough. It's How true, is that it people here? come, seriously, we've, we've talked quite a bit. I think one of the reasons why Sunset Magazine and so many other people are flocking to this area, whether it's for big wine events or chefs that are, you know, sort of making their uh, restaurant home here, there really is this wonderful sort of local abundance that's difficult to duplicate in other parts of California, let alone the world. So tell us a little bit about the crab that you're working with, where you get it, and you mentioned the great sourdough, you know, right around the corner. Um, where are you getting your materials? In it? Do you try to do that local approach? We do as much local as we can. We have a butcher down in Arroyo Grande that grinds our own sausage for us. Oh, wow. We have someone that grows tomatoes for us. They've actually built two greenhouses so they can supply us with tomatoes year-round. I get local berries. Apple season has just started in Avila, so now we're going to start to switch over to apples and cobblers Canyon, and things like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. um, as far as crab, when Dungeness Crab and the season's open here, we'll feature local product, um, local rock crab. Any other crab that isn't indigenous to this area, like the Alaskan king crab, we've gone up to Dutch Harbor. Um, I've been up twice myself. My boss has been up a half a dozen times to make sure that we're getting the best product that's from domestic waters. Um, the king crab that we bring, bring in, you can't find anywhere else in the world. Wow. Um, we've been up there. We've met guys in the boats from the deadliest catch and ah. kind of see how they do it and how they process it. Um, there's lots of crab out there. All the king crab comes. All the different crab comes from the same water. It's how it's handled, and I think that's what separates us um, is we're going to seek out the best the best product that, that's out there. And that's what's neat for me as a chef being out here. Um, you know, there's other chefs from some of the restaurants right around the corner here that do the same thing, and you see them at Farmer's Market and, yeah. and talk to them about what fish is coming in, and it's just neat that everyone... We were just we, talking with Chef Greg from uh, the Cliffs in Marisol mm -hmm. about his uh, big swordfish catch. Over 200 pounder that they just brought in. Yeah, so. they just landed it up in Morro Bay, yeah, and that's yeah. we change our menu every day. So I get a phone call from someone that says, you know, albacore, sea bass, and and that's why we bring in what's local. It, it not only tastes better, and it's great to support the local community. It's usually cheaper. I mean, it's a win-win-win yeah. for for everybody. And we don't bring in Chilean sea bass because we're not anywhere near Chile, and we wait for the local white sea bass season. It it tastes better. Um, yeah. It's just something that, that we try and continue to do. I, th I think that authenticity really resonates with people, too. You know, we've talked a lot about the, you know, sometimes something will become a fad. This whole, you know, people say, oh, sustainable, organically grown, or I know the farmer, you know, I met him once at the farmer's market six years ago or something. But here there's such a, an integrity to what I'm hearing where there, there are people who know the, the fisherman boat captain boat and the, the guy's kids and their birthdays because you're talking with them on a daily basis about what they're bringing in. Ditto for farmers where you know the 
land, you know where they're growing because you're there walking the rows with them. And I live in Los Osos, which is you know oh, about yeah. 20 minutes north of here, and I come through the canyons, I go by organic farms, and then I shoot out through the canyon here, and there's the Pacific Ocean, and yeah. it's just, it's great. It's, yeah. it's like being up north, it's like Napa w without the traffic. Yep. Well, when we're talking about uh, local resources, uh, there's a really important resource that we haven't really talked about yet, and that is um, Cal Poly and its commitment to agriculture. Tell us, I mean, Cal Poly's in San Luis Obispo, just up the road here. Tell us a little bit about Cal Poly and some of its impact on the food industry here. Oh, I, as you know, they do a lot with wine and there's lots of kids that will come out and, and I say kids, but the college students still get their first internship. They'll be in some wineries. Yep, the secret's out though. Pismo Beach, we're really excited to be here. I've been talking uh, with the executive chef of the world famous Cracked Crabs. Uh, believe me, people, if you've not, I, I can't, I must take it on faith because I'm cursed with this shellfish allergy, but uh, I'll bring my mom. She's passionate about crab bees, guys. She will give me the, the research. But uh, we're told it is the finest, and if you've not had a chance to come down to Pismo Beach, it's a must-stop place for sure on any visit here. And we really thank you for coming out and supporting the event, and he's doing one of the courses tonight. So uh, lots of great food happening tonight at Savor the Central Coast, part of Sunset Magazine's International Wine Competition. And I'm Bonnie Graves. We're excited to have you come visit us here in Pismo Beach. There's a lot of other people that go into the ag part of it too, and they've kind of grown up going to Cal Poly. They know some of the restaurants. They've met people at farmers markets. Disclaimer: and... My mother-in-law is a business professor at Cal Poly. Disclaimer: But it is a wonderful school. Um, and do you find it? Our, um, yeah, you know, an, an interesting thing as a chef. I'm not sure what your own particular career path has been, but increasingly, this whole idea of going to culinary school instead of, uh, you know. Where do you go to culinary school? Do you go to Cordon Bleu? Do you take some classes at Cal Poly? How do you come to work in the wine business or work in the ag business or work in the food business? I think there are a lot of different paths now where people are finding themselves drawn to the food industry, but maybe don't go the traditional route. And my little disclaimer, <laughs> if you want to go into the food industry, find a great chef with cooking schools, thirty-eight dollars to $45,000 a year. Go work for free for a great chef for six months or a year. You say you can't afford to do that. It's the same thirty-five or yeah. forty thousand you would be paying. I couldn't agree You'll more. You'll learn yeah. so much more practical than if you want to go get some theoretical. But yeah. find out if you like it. You, yeah. you, it not all that it is on TV. Yeah, exactly. It's more. Yeah, that's exactly. And I, I think you make a great point. It's the same thing for the wine industry. You know, I worked as a sommelier for many, many years, and you can take 